All right, we've come into the realm of subnetting. This section is going to be long and painful. No, it's not. It's not painful at all. It's not, I'm going to shed light, get it? Shed light on the subject. It is not physics. It is not three different or four different differential equations. So you don't have to worry about that, okay? Uh, it's simple, it's easy. Like it says right there, the subnet mask is the key. That's the first thing we're going to talk about. The subnet mask. In your examination, pray, hope, whatever it is that they ask you direct questions like, if you have this IP address with this mask, what network, what's the network ID, what's the range, and what's the broadcast? That will be excellent. But they're not going to ask you that. Everything is going to be hidden within, an, I told you, within a NAT question or within an access list or an OSPF statement. And then you have to figure it out by doing reverse engineering, you know, oh, okay, it has this wildcard mask, so this is this. And we're going to talk about all those different things here in this particular section. Okay, but the first thing is the subnet mask. If you're given a subnet mask, automatically you need to understand where that line, which people have been calling now the magical line, which it is a magical line, because once you draw that line, you know what's up. You know your break. Once you draw the line, you know how many holes you have. You know how many uh, subnets you have. You know what your broadcast, ad um, not your broadcast address, what your wildcard mask is going to be. You know how your network is going to increment. It gives you all that information right there at your fingertips. All right? I'm telling you, the subnet mask is the key to everything. But this is the problem. If they give you a 255, 255, 255, okay, that's easy enough. We know that that means that A bits are on, A bits are on, A bits are on, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That means our line is right here. We understand that. And that means that when your, your network ID would be x.x.x.0, dot x dot x dot then you add all these bit values right here, and that's 255. And then that will come over, that will come over here. It will be x dot x dot x dot two fifty five, and then whatever's in between, which is one through two fifty four. Pretty simple. That's a pretty simple. Doesn't matter if it's a class A, B, or C. And let me uh, clarify something right now, because apparently there's some rogue professor, instructor, teacher, whatever you want to call it, uh, that's telling people that. The subnet mask determines the class of address. No, it does not. If you have a class A address, and I'll put it down here just to show you an example. Let me make a little bit more room. Put it in the middle where you guys can see that. If you have 10.1.1.0, a network, and you have a set of 24 what? That 24 mask? All of a sudden, that 255, 255, 255.0 magically turned that 10 into a class A range? No, that's why we learned to classify IP addresses by looking at the first octet and seeing the range that it falls in. What you're looking at is a subnetted class A address. And then you are allowed to have more networks. All right, we'll talk about classful boundaries and all that good stuff especially when we get into the routing protocols. But please, keep that in mind. The mask has nothing to do with the class of address. That we have default mask for each class is one thing. But you can take a class A and subnet it, you know, with a 24 or 28 or 20 or whatever you want. It's completely up to you. That mask is not going to change the classification of that particular IP address. All right? We classify the IP address so we know, hey, this IP address can hold 16 million, this IP address, or this class of address can hold 16 million, this class of address can hold thousands, and this class can only hold hundreds. So depending on the infrastructure that you're setting up, you decide accordingly what class of address you want to use. That's what that's there for. But the subnet mask is so you can do something that I just did just like here. I, no numbers. Right? I know that a CIDR 24 slash 24 uh, means, hey, my line, this magical line, 
is right here. That's it. And you saw how quick I did that. You saw how quick I did that. It is that simple. But the problem begins that not only is it working, not working in the last octet because that's simple enough, but when you're working in the third octet, and then if they give you a mass like this, 255, 255, 240. Because now people are like, oh, well, how many bits are on? I, I know if they would have given me a cider 20, I knew I had to count 20 bits over. But guess what? They didn't give you a cider 20. They gave you a 240. What does that mean? That means x dot x dot x. Oops, sorry. 1, 2, 3, 4. Line. 1, 2, 3, 4. Dot. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, how did I know four bits? We know that we have bit values, ladies and gentlemen, bit values that go on top, on top, 128, let me uh, bring this down a little bit more, sorry, put that there, oops, there, there we go. Now, obviously, this is not going to line up perfectly, but those are your bit values, all right? If you add these first four bit values right there, which are these four bit values, that's going to come out to 240. You need to know, you need to know my, this little, not mine, this is not mine, uh, but this little table, this little bit to decimal table right here. One bit on, 128. Consecutive bits, right? 1 bit on, 128. 2 bits on, 192. 3 bits on, 224. 4 bits on, 240. You need to know that. So you, so you know whatever. If they give you a slash 20 where it's easy, just count 20 bits, right? That's what the number is for. Or they give you a 240. You know exactly where you need to be. Because once you draw that line, it's over. It's over. You already got the answers to whatever you need. You know that if your line is right here, hey, your increment is 16. It's incrementing on the third octet, but you're incrementing by 16. You know your wall car mask. Well, if you add these, there's one really one less the increment, that's 15. This is 255. So it's your wall car mask is 0, 0, 15, 255. No physics. How many hosts do we have? 2, 4, 8, 16. 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1024, 248, 4096, minus 2, 4094. 40, How many hosts? I mean, subnets, sorry. 2, 4, 8, 16. If I'm using the zero network, it's 16. If I'm not using the zero network, I take away 2, 14. That line gives you everything. So knowing how to convert from a dotted decimal notation all right, to know exactly where that line is at, you need to know that table. You need to know that table. Now, people tell me, hey, Laz, there's just way too many things to remember. This table, the line, if you add this number, then you count by two at the bottom and you count by one. I ask you this question, ladies and gentlemen. Did we not have to learn all these different, memorize all these different things as far as timetables, how to divide, you know, some of us that took physics, we're not even using numbers, for God's sakes. They're symbols, all right? And we figure out all these different things. So there's certain things that you need to memorize. There's certain things that you need to know. That's just the way it is, especially in IT, that, hey, this works like this, and that's it. And this is the syntax for this, and that's it. Those of you that went, uh, that uh, learned JavaScript or HTML or Flash or any kind of programming language, you had to understand the syntax and the commas and the apostrophes and the brackets and you got to point to this one and then point to the back up, you know, all these memorization, memorization and repetition breeds retention. The more you do something, the more it becomes second nature to you, okay? So with this, you need to practice every single day. You need to understand what the subnet mask is. That is the key to everything. Because the subnet mask in IPv4, there is no subnet mask in IPv6. Just to tell you that right now. There is no subnet mask in IPv6. There is a subnet mask in IPv4. You need to understand that 
part that soda mask is the key. It tells you what network you're in and how many hosts exist on that network. So that's the key because if I tell you, hey, my IP address is 172.16.10.33. Uh, okay, so what? Well, well, what network am I in? Well, what's your mask? Well, you tell me. Well, how am I going to tell you? It, it, okay, slash 16. You're in a default class B. I don't know. The IP address by itself is nothing. It's just a number. It is a subnet mask that actually tells you what part is the host and what part is the network. So this right here, ladies and gentlemen, is the key to everything. And you can see where this bit right here, this last bit right there, is this guy right here, the 16, that you're incrementing by 16, so your network's incrementing by 16. And guess what? In the test, if you are asked an IP addressing question straight out like that, Cisco loves to use the incrementation of 16. Why? Because it's the hardest one and it's the easiest one to make a math mistake. So what did Laz do when he was going through school? I made it a point, not even to add anymore. I added at first, but then I said, you know what, I'm going to memorize the heck out of this one. Where it's, oh, it's incrementing by 16, no problem. 0, 16, 32, 48, 64, 80, 96, 112, 128, 144, uh, 160, 176, 192, 208, and then uh, 16 more is 224, and then 240. So I remembered all those. So if I were to take a test right now that was just pure, let's say that the, back, in, uh, the, back in the days, uh, the year 2000, right, that there was an actual exam called TCP IP and the majority of the exam was subnetting. So I would literally write everything down before I actually took the test. Okay, that way you understand, that way you don't have to make a math mistake because if you're like me and I am the worst, I think, test taker in the world, I mean, I don't know because I haven't been around the world, but I'm pretty bad. I get the shakes. I go pale. You, I've told you the story before. And so I make sure that when I go take a certification exam that will have some sort of IP questions, I write out the incrementation of 16. Because once you write out that incrementation, it doesn't matter if you're in the, in the third, uh, fourth, third, second, first, you already know that incrementation. Just be careful so you know which octet you're in. So again, like here, this, this one right here, the 255, 255, 224. I know 224 is three bits. So if it's three bits, I'm incrementing by 32. There it is right here, three bits. There's my 32. I already know that. Yeah, but last, you've been teaching this for 200 years. You're right. But that's what I, how I want you to get. I want you to get to the point where, you know, you, how you've seen those movies where the guys take apart weapons and all these things blindfolded they drive blindfolded and all this stuff well instead of you know doing that blindfolding you should be able to know oh i know the ip address that you're using in the sun and mass you should be able to figure it out like this there's no need to have six boards coming up and down doing all this crazy formulas to figure out you know what network you're in or how many holes you have or i've seen <laughs> i've seen people do some crazy stuff with Excel to figure out, uh, I mean, I was like, my God, what, what is this? This is it's more confusing than anything else. This is all it is. This subnet mask, that's it. I mean, here, let me, let me write it out for you. It's X, 8 bits on, X, 8 bits on, 224, 1, 2, 3. Line, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3. I increment by 32, so XX, X, 32, 0. XX, X, 64, 0. XX, X, 96, 0. Those are your networks. That's it. And then you add accordingly. If that's a 32, guess what these add up to? One less is 31. Third octet. So you add that 31 to 32, that's 63. Right? So let's, 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 let's just write out the first one. And I know I'm not supposed to be subnetting in this particular lecture. But just to show you how simple this is, once I got the line, yes, I'm excited. I, that's why I wrote a book on it, right? 
and it's going extremely well in Amazon. And a lot of people are getting into it, okay? Because it gives them a very straightforward, simple explanation on all about IPs. Because it is straightforward. So, here you got x.x, .x, right? What's the incrementation? 32. So let's start with 32, let's say. Dot zero. That's your network ID. So what do you do? You get this right here. You add those bit values that are on. Well, you add the bit values, which are these right here. Guess what that adds up to? One less 32. So you add that 31, which is in the third octet, to that 32 on the third octet gives you what? X dot X dot X. Oops. 63. And then the last one, which is all zeros, right? You take all those bit values and you add them up. What does that come up to? 25. There you go. You got your network ID and you got your broadcast address. So what's in between? So what's after 32.0? 32.1. What's before 63.255? 63.254. Now, when we get to something, I'll get a little bit deeper because a lot of people say, well, 62. No, no. Always remember. Always remember. In the last octet. In the last octet, uh, is you, this has got to go all the way down to zero before you can change this to 62. Remember that little analogy with the turning in the leaves? You got to roll back the miles. Same thing. Okay? Same thing. This has got to go all the way back to zero before this turns to 62. All right? Look at this. This is easy. I didn't even give you any numbers, any class, or anything. I just gave you a mask. And I came up with networks because I knew where to draw the line. And the bit values tell you everything. Okay? So definitely your subnet mask is the key. And I'm telling you right now, You need to memorize that table. You need to memorize the bit table. If you already know it, great. Awesome. All right? Awesome. If you know this, life will be easy on you when you go out there and start doing IP questions. But again, the subnet mask is the most important part of an IP version 4 address because that is the key to everything. That is the one that's going to tell you what's what, where that dividing line is at. All right? All right? I'll see you in the next uh, lecture, so be ready.